were anchored at an uninhabited island in the Caribbean. Island Round is rugged, untamed, and we're crazy enough to try to hike to the top. Oh man, show me the side of your knee. So that's the path that Joel took. That's the path that the rest of us took. It's a beautiful day to go for a sail. Mmm, she's coming along nicely. The second leg of our sea trial was mostly smooth. Those trade winds are gonna kick back in as there's no more land to shield us and the swell's gonna kick up. This is Joel. Together with Tony and Jared, he gave up everything to buy a sailboat and go on the adventure of a lifetime. But after a death-defying sail to Cuba, he found himself alone. Wish me luck on this adventure. When Michael finished school, I asked her to sail with me and she agreed. Together, we explored the Bahamas, rescued a dismasted boat, sailed through a tropical storm, battled parasites and fiberglass for a year in the boatyard, adopted an orphan puppy, survived a hurricane, sailed across the Caribbean Sea, and fell madly in love. Bums on a Boat is about having the courage to go for it, to make mistakes and commit to a dream. Subscribe and join us each week as we improvise, adapt, and overcome. And we're going on an epic hike all the way to the top viewpoint of this island where we can see the bay, where we're anchored. We'll see Grenada to the south, Kariku to the north. And it's not an actual trail. We're kind of going to bushwhack our way up there. You bleeding profusely? It's a pretty intense hike. Just comes right out and kicks you in the nuts. No trail. No Steve, trail. off road, rocks everywhere. Really, yeah, yeah, no trail at all. I, I, Hello! This is a pretty insane hike. Slip in and slide in, loose leaves and rocks, no trail. But we're here. Well, I think we're to the first summit. We're gonna go a little bit further up. What kind of shoes are we got working with? I'm working with these, which don't have a crazy amount of traction. They are fashionable though. As you can see, they're my boat yard shoes. What happened, Joel? A lot of thorns in my knee and all of my feet. You bleeding profusely? Oh man, show me the side of your knee. Ow. Yeah, I got blast. Brutal. Yeah. So that's the path that I Joel took. Path here, but I mean... That's the path that the rest of us took. <sighs> Whew. They don't call it an adventure for nothing. We're sweating, we're bleeding, but I think we're basically to the top, maybe. There's no trail, you know. This is so cool. The whole tree is just covered in air plants. Uh, Mike and Jean knew how to get to the first overlook point with this incredible view of the anchorage. But it wasn't the highest point on the island, so we said, let's keep going. Let's get to the tallest point on the island. And it's gotten a little more hectic the higher and higher we climb. Thank God Mike, our fearless leader, is up there with the machete just hacking a trail. Machete, Mike. Beating down the cactuses and the branches. <laughs> this is intense, guys. What are we doing out here? It's like the wild, wild west. Look at this view! <laughs> This is it, we made it to the tallest point on Island Ruined. You, Machete Mama. Mike says onward! Onward! Time to make the, the descent. We've made our decision, so we're gonna take this route. And just like Plinko, we're gonna bob our way down and see where we end up, down at the bottom. Straight left from here. Like breadcrumbs. Yes, yeah, it does breadcrumbs. Yeah. Uh, 
show you any features, doesn't show you anything. But it will get you where you gotta go. We got separated from our crew leader, Machete Mike. Got a little lost, honestly. He started taking some switchbacks for Jean. I guess it was gonna be easier on her ankle, but they were going way in the other direction. So I hope they're gonna be okay. We did find the landmark. There's the landmark, the tree. We also found the first view. So Michael and I feel like we're, we know where we're going, but it gets hairy out here. What just happened? She led us all the way to the beach. She was trying to lead us the right way the whole time. We got a little bit turned around. Mike wanted, I think Mike is just going more of like a switchback route because he was going way, way left. Anyways, Lola was just waiting for us. And then uh, the last time she was at the very top of the, the main trail here to the beach. Just waiting on just us. Just a stab. Lola. Oh. Starting to get just a little worried about our friends, Mike and Jean. Not even worried, but expecting them to be here by now. I think we've been back for about an hour maybe 45 minutes, um, but he has the tracker. He's Machete Mike, he has the survival kit. Lola, did you hear him or what? I heard them. She heard him? She literally, yeah, like just moments before I went over there, Lola was like, here. Lola. Him. That's so She's crazy. so observant. It's amazing with how loud the water is that she was able to hear him that far away. Right. Yeah. That's why I walked over there and as soon as I walked over there, Gigi came scampering down. I was like, Gigi! That was an amazing hike. That was like a level 10 on the, the hard level, maybe eight, but there was no trail, which is what made it so crazy. All of the spikes and the thorns and the cacti, and then the rocks slipping out and the crazy footing and the elevation. It was a fun hike, but it was definitely a little advanced. Beautiful day to go for a sail. Lola, go to your spot. Go on. Go to your spot. Go on. Alright, it's time to pull anchor heading for Grenada. We got about a five and a half hour sail. Uh, at least that's what it looks like if everything goes according to plan. Got the engine started, we're about to pull up the mainsail on anchor. <laughs> How's that tan coming? Mmm, she's coming along nicely. I think the clouds took the sun. Oh man. I got the heading. The heading is 225 and I'm holding it now. That'll do nicely. about Grenada. It's uh, one of those cruiser paradises that you hear about. One of those like summer camps that never end for adults. Uh, Georgetown in the Bahamas is kind of like that. Oh, um, but Grenada seems like it's, it's in its own bracket. 
of uh, playgrounds for cruisers. Wow, the seas are so calm right now. The winds have really died down and we're right in the opening where this is where the winds and the swell should be at its highest, craziest point. And then we're gonna get around Grenada and it should be really calm and protected. But this is a surprise uh, to see how calm it is. And we're doing about seven, seven knots, I'd say. Seven, yeah, average about seven to eight knots. First reef made and about a three quarter jib. You're probably wondering why the engine is on in the background, messing with our nice, tranquil ambiance. Um, but the main reason is to charge up our batteries. We had some really cloudy days there at uh, Island Rund, and we need to charge up the batteries if we're going to keep running the autopilot, the bridge, charging the our DC outlets. Right now, it, when it goes to the port, it doesn't come back. Joel's updating me on the autopilot progress. Um, he was trying it out, seeing if with the calmer sea state, we could actually hold a heading, but apparently no, it's still not quite holding course. So that's a bummer. Gonna have to work that one out because having the autopilot is what we were so excited for. The whole neck thing, we gotta get a mount up yeah, our game. I think our GPS game is probably the saddest, oh. saddest part of our sail game right now. Oh, come on. How are your nerves this morning, babe? I was a little, I was a little nervous. Was it the coffee? The coffee added, but luckily we had the two eggs and the bacon breakfast. Um, and I had some water, so that was good. Overall, I feel a lot less nervous now than I used to feel, than I remember, you know, even a year ago. Yeah. Um, my heart and the breathing didn't get really as crazy. I didn't get the crazy coughs. The, oh, ah! But also, I think I'm more relaxed about a five to six hour sail compared to like a four day sail or even a one day sail, you know? Right. We're set up for island hopping and coastal cruising, but like long offshore voyages get to be a little intense. I just realized the, the current was taking us. So I've got to really make up some headway. I've got to go about 210 now. Because we drifted way west of our uh, of our line there. A little bit of a technical issue here, guys. We just got a brand new lapel mic, which is awesome for cutting down the wind noise, but it only works when it's turned on, so we lost the audio for this clip. But what I'm explaining here is that I just went down to check the engine, and I saw something crazy. There was water leaking through the bulkhead that separates the steerage from the engine compartment. And I had no idea what was going on. I told Joel, all flustered, a little bit frightened, and he knew exactly where that water was coming from. So that's when he had me open up the hatch behind our helm and take a look at the exhaust hose. Sure enough, there was a steady stream of rust-colored water coming out of that old, crusty, rusty exhaust hose. Okay, so here's the game plan. The bilge pump is easily keeping up with the level of water coming in from the exhaust hose, so we decide to keep running the engine, charging the batteries, and enjoying making good time, knowing that we can sail if we absolutely need to and just cut the engine. So we're looking at the highest point in Grenada, but we can't even see it because it's covered by clouds. It is, I believe, 3,500 feet tall. So this is a big island map. So even though we've been out for an hour running the engine this whole time, the batteries are still pretty low, just at 88%. We're pumping 30 amps into them from the alternator, but they got so low over the last few days that we just really, really got to toast them now to get them back up to 
This is the first time we've been able to let Lola sit up here with us on the cockpit. She's usually down on the sole, tucked away or down below. She's so flat and nice. She's still nervous, for sure, very nervous, but a lot, a lot better than she used to be. She's I mean, she's, she's come a long way. We've made it down the length of the island with our friends Mike and Jean over there on Drakkar. It's been easy, breezy, beautiful. We're loving all the brightly colored houses, the little neighborhoods, and it's just been a gorgeous sail. But it's coming to a head as we reach the southernmost tip of the island. Those trade winds are gonna kick back in as there's no more land to shield us and the swell's gonna kick up. So we're putting the life jackets back on. We've got Lola down, stowed, in her little spot underneath the captain's chair. And we're kind of just, you know, bracing ourselves, squeezing our cheeks together and gritting our teeth, getting ready for it. <gasps> Joel reminds me, we do have 100% charge on the batteries, woo! So even though we've got a leak from our exhaust hose that's slowly filling up the bilge, the batteries are charged. Well guys, we gritted our teeth and clenched our cheeks, but we came around that corner and absolutely shit ourselves. The waves were on our face, the wind was on our nose, the boat was getting wet, so we only got a couple clips and put the cameras away. But we made it in. Coming in to Prickly Bay, baby! <laughs> Coming Woo! in! Trying to figure out where we're gonna anchor. I suppose, I see Drakkar just kind of on the outskirts there. We could probably drop over by them. I think there's some moorings in here that we got to watch out for, so we got to find the anchored boats and cozy up there. This actually could be a little challenging just to find a good place to anchor. This uh, looks like an awesome harbor. If you can see around me, there's tons of boats here. The depth so far has been like in the 40s, 40 feet. We like to anchor in about 20 feet, somewhere in that area. But wow, big anchorage, tons of boats. All right, All we got right. safely anchored out there in about 35 feet of water. Yeah, we're in Prickly Bay. Oh, hang on. Though. Lily, you gotta lay Just down. Sweet. Prickly Bay Harbor. It's a well protected anchorage. Tons of boats here. Yeah, lots of boats. Lots of, there's two marinas. There's restaurants. A marine, restaurants, beach. Fuel, water. Totally yeah, great it, spot. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful anchorage so far. Yeah. Um, any fun facts for us, Mr. Fun Facts Thank Man? you all for commenting in our last episode. I asked the viewers, you, if you wanted fun facts. Uh, I was in the middle of sharing one when Michael interrupted, and you guys came in hot. And thank you for letting Michael know that Personally, fun I was facts a are cool. bored. Fun facts are cool. But I was the okay. only one. Well, So what do you got? Well, one fun fact, it rains a lot here in Grenada because the elevation, 3,500 feet, there's a lot of mountains here. It creates its own weather here, um, and then it just rains constantly. So we're getting a lot of rain here, which is bringing up some other topics we won't get into right now. Another fun fact, in 1983, the United States invaded Grenada, the very island that we're on right now, mm -hmm. um, to, I think it was to kind of fight communism. It's a political More situation. or less, to really paraphrase, but this okay. like Marxist-Leninist... Um, New Jewel Movement took over the government. You guys really inspired They created Joel. the People's Revolutionary Government and then the People's Revolutionary Army. What those guys did is they captured the Prime Minister and they executed him. And that's, that's what prompted the United States to invade. And since then, they've had a stable government, yeah. parliamentary representative. Cool. And this is history to me because it was long before I was born, but I have a feeling some of you out here yeah. might remember 1983, 1984. There you go. Leave a comment if you remember it. Uh, leave a hashtag 1984. If you feel like dating yourself. Yeah. Or not, maybe not hashtag. Maybe like an old man emoji. <laughs> like, an, like an old man or old woman emoji, 1984. If you remember that. Because, hey, I'm getting old and that was before I was born. Yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> And I don't You're really getting old. All right, so <laughs> last episode we had uh, a leaky prop shaft. We showed it was just so we got water coming in the boat all the time, but just wanted to uh, add a Not little bit all the time. to the perspective there. It only came in. It comes in. We have a dripless stuffing box, and it's uh, it only comes in when we're in low low idle, and we put it in gear, and the prop shaft starts spinning while the engine's shaking. Yeah, it kind of breaks that seal a little, and water spurts in. As soon as we give it throttle, it stops. So we've just, we just don't leave it in low idle and we haven't been taking water in. Right. The engine just shakes a lot in low idle. And once you give it 
a little bit of throttle. It smooths right out and then we don't take in any water. So that was fine, but this <laughs> is the this is the exhaust hose where that right before the exhaust water went out of the boat, this is where we were leaking in this episode. Uh, we've since pulled this out, replaced it with a nice brand shiny new one. And Oh, have to give a massive shout out to Ricky from Sailing Lady Africa for attempting to prevent us from having this problem. He tried. Thanks, Ricky. You're the man. You're the man. I appreciate it. Um, Thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, the rain is bringing up some interesting um, revelations. I guess. Yeah, we're also about shock taking water in through the tow There's rails. There's a lot of rain coming all in. the time. So the bilge is full of water. That's so what we're going to Stay tuned. Next. Subscribe. Thank yeah. you for watching. Oh, massive, humongous, gigantic thank you to Philip, one of our legendary patrons. He wasn't too stoked about our GoPro Hero 4 footage, I'm guessing. And he decided to send us a GoPro Hero 10. A Hero 10. Let's go, baby. Well, right now, we're filming on GoPro 4s, guys. Totally blown I'm away. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but like lately, because oh. we had a GoPro 7, but I dove on the mooring and I broke it. And so now we're using GoPro 4s, and Philip was like, yo, man, I like watching you guys, but, but that GoPro 4 stuff footage. has got to go. So, like, for my for myself, I'm going to send you guys a GoPro 10. Because <laughs> yeah. your content, you know, you guys are funny, but, man, I yeah. wish you guys looked better than a GoPro 4. So. Philip, you're Thank the you, man. Philip. Yeah. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, viewers. We'll see you next week. See ya. On Bums on a Boat. That's right. These are the tales of Boab. Oh. Um.